All right, welcome back. And you've sent us in some very good questions, but I know you're holding back. I know you've got more, so don't do that. Send in all the questions and make them as challenging as you can uh, uh, put to these uh, two wonderful actors. <laughs> they will be able to answer it, I promise you. But let's begin. Both of you have um, a, a dis well, let me put it this way. The festival played a very important part in your careers because both of you were here when you were very young. Mm -hmm. And you still are, of course, both of you. But, but you, this was an important place in terms of your development. Now, Maria, you came to us as one of our first Chicago oh, associates. Oh, yeah, I was uh, the first coming from Chicago and uh, I really had never done Shakespeare before. And it was a huge uh, watershed time for me. I worked with Michael Langham. I did Love Sleepers Lost mm. and uh, Much Ado About Nothing. And it was a transforming time. I had come here when I was, of course, a 17-year-old seeing, I think I saw Hamlet then. And I remember feeling this white light around me thinking I've got to be on that stage. So mm. it was a huge time. So that was, um, like you reminded me, Anthony, it was like almost 25 years ago. So coming back now is uh, a thrill and also a revelation because I'd like to go back and do all those parts again. <laughs> what happened after, like what happened in between and, and how did it feel to now come back and play Gertrude? Um, what happened in between is I went to Toronto. I had, uh, I had three seasons here. I went to Toronto and I spent the ensuing years doing uh, theatre in Toronto. Um, small, medium size, also the regionals, um, lots of film and television. And then uh, coming back here was just uh, was fantastic. Uh, it, it's all very, very different, but to be able to do this role, Gertrude, now is just, um, it's thrilling. And it's a great company, it's a great cast, and so it's, uh, it's great to be back. Yes, and we're very lucky that you are back. Thanks. Now, Adrian, you came here when you were Oh boy. I think the first birthday that I had here, I turned 25. So yes. I've had my 25th birthday here, I've had my 30th birthday here, and I'll okay, stop that's there. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I remember being so impressed with your work because you were such a young actress, and Thank yet you. you were so well seated in what you were doing, and there was always such elemental truth to what everything that you were saying. Now, you've done a lot of plays since then, and you've been here throughout. Yeah. Um, how does this, you played a lot of parts. Now this one's a real challenge. How does that feel, like in terms of the emotional commitment and everything compared to the work that you've done before? Well, I feel like I'm at a place where I can tackle this role, where I think it has taken these yeah. eight seasons to get to where I am. So I'm glad it didn't come. I'm glad it's coming at this point in my career. Um, how does it feel? Yes, I mean, we have a question actually here about uh, Adrian really enjoyed Pentecost. How do you prepare differently for Hamlet than Pentecost? I think, I, I, don't, I don't know that you, were, you prepare differently. Um, you know, it, my, I don't know if you know him, but my good friend Google has always been a <laughs> <laughs> strong uh, part of my research. You know, I just read as much as I possibly can. Um, however, Pentecost, I was playing a Palestinian freedom fighter and there's so much historical information. I mean, it's just everywhere. It's in the newspapers every day. So I can't really read the newspaper for research for Ophelia, but uh, I wouldn't say there's necessarily less research, but it's still a lot of just reading and, and um, whatever I can get my hands on on the internet. Google, I Google. Ophelia, Ophelia's madness, Ophelia victim, mm. Ophelia lover, and it's amazing what you can come up with. Hmm. But f I guess there was more research um, through the internet with Pentecost because it is based in a, a, a conflict. But Adrian, in, as Ophelia, there's so much emotional uh, truth in what you're doing and the situation is so extreme. Did you find that you, like, did you, you just work through that or did you, was the part of you that had to be prepared to go to a kind of deeper place than you maybe had to go to before? Uh, before in... In other, any, almost any other part you can think of. It's, it's so, um, it's so uh, <laughs> naked, this it's, part in some way, for 1,800 people. It is, you know? it's very raw and... Yeah. Um, 
but at the same time, the circumstances, I mean, Ophelia, she loses her lover and her lover kills her father. So it's, it's not hard to put yourself in those circumstances, to imagine yourself, you know, if my husband killed my father, you know, it right. can take you to very dark places and it, it just requires um, imagining as awful as it is these circumstances as if they really happened to me, Adrian. Well, let's talk about the circumstances. We have Hamlet's women. What kind of world is this relative to the women? I mean, are they powerful? Are they Maria? Well, I think, I think the world that this is is a, a world in which women really are dominated by men and decisions. It's a, it's a culture where the decisions are made by men. So women usually go along with that. Um, I, you know, I think Gertrude has had a bad rap is in, in a lot of my reading as well as in some she's been portrayed as, you know, she's shallow, she's silly, she's flighty, she's, you know, she jumps from her husband's uh, mourning her dead husband to getting married and, uh, you know, she doesn't think. Um, I, I, I choose to think that rather than that is that she is uh, more, um, she's life affirming, she's chosen life, she's chosen love, mm. she's chosen to move forward in, in a very positive way. In practical and, way too. And very practical yeah. Yeah. and yes, it's denial. She denies that, she submerges the guilt, she denies the fact that maybe she should have told Hamlet or maybe she should consider his feelings, uh, but she doesn't, you know. It's a bad decision, but I don't think it's made out of flightiness, flakiness. I think she's a survivor mm -hmm. and um, I think she does what she needs to do to live and to embrace love. Um, in a world, and, and I think that this is, it's catastrophic for everybody, certainly for Hamlet, because she doesn't passively remain in grief um, mm. of her husband's memory. And uh, I think in that world, that's because it's dominated by men, it's very troublesome. And that's, that's the world that she's in. Now we've set the play in Denmark, 1901. Um, which is a very interesting time, and it's you know the beginning of the Edwardian era, era so it, it leaps into a very stylish, uh, fun time as opposed to the Victorians before that. Um, so it's a it's a neat mm -hmm. time, and to see how Shakespeare can stretch to fit that time. Yes, that sunniness before the mm -hmm. First World yes, War. Yes. Yes. And also, I love the cafe life that are oh. involved, so that Hamlet really fits in with a kind of intellectual ferment that was happening at the time. Yes, you know? yeah, that's fine. questioning the past. Mm -hmm. Now, your first scene, we, of course, in every great tragedy, it always seems like it comes down to family, right? Mm -hmm. And your first scene is with your father and with your brother, mm -hmm. and um, so right away we get the strong sense of the men in your life. Yeah, there is no mother, and hmm. so often young women in Shakespeare don't have a mother, and you, it's always a, a, a huge question of mine how things would have been different. I don't think that first scene would have necessarily have played out in the same way. I don't know that, uh, I, I don't, it almost has a, fe a feeling of um, the birds and the bees you know, the, right. the, <laughs> uh, which, and, uh, with the parent from the other sex, yeah. which is always a little bit awkward. Right? I, well, but, you being a father, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> she doesn't have a mother. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't have a mother. So, so that you know, the the men in her life are, are a huge presence, which is why I think in the mad scene when she loses her father, it is so so devastating because. He's been, you know, the love of her life up until she meets Hamlet, but she's also losing Hamlet. 